What is up, everybody? Keith, a.k.a. Gator Guy 231 It is Monday, August 3rd. We have five games on the main slate starting at 4 p.m. Should be a fun slate. Yesterday was awesome. Um, felt really good to, you know, get back on the good picks. Uh, you know, what was it, Friday and Saturday? A little bit of a struggle. I felt like I kept getting misses. And yesterday really all came together with the likes of Thomas Bryant, Jared Allen, um, I low and pick Jason Tatum, you know, a lot of the, the values going off. Troy Brown Jr., all these guys that we were kind of on, all just popping off, and you love to see it. So I'm um, hoping to put it back-to-back to, back to put together back-to-back performances today um, and have a good slate. This is a quick reminder, all these videos on the YouTube channel are free. It really, really helps if you subscribe to our channel. Uh, it is the best way to show your support for us. So um, bottom right of your screen, hit that subscribe button. Um, we really do appreciate it. And if you are interested in our premium Discord, um, core plays where we cover every showdown and, cl- and the, the classic slates, um, join in the link in the details. All right, let's get into the games. First game at four is Denver versus OKC. OKC is favored by four and a half. I actually was not able to pull a total. I tra- checked two books. Both of them don't have a total, I'm assuming in large part due to the Denver you know, injury news, which let's just jump right into that. Jamal Murray is very questionable with a hamstring. Even if he plays, I will not touch somebody dealing with hamstring issues. That's just kind of like one of my things. I think there's just so many other routes you can go on this slate. There's no reason to force it. Barton is out and Harris is out. So Nikola Jokic, um, in my opinion, is the top play on the Denver side, which, you know, obviously that, that doesn't come as much surprise at all. Um, but what may surprise you is just even with the team healthy, what he's done versus OKC this season. Uh, he had 32, 7, and 5 in the last meeting, 28, 14, and 12. You know, Adams is known as a good defender, but obviously Djokic's skill set is one that, you know, is really tough to contain no matter how good a defender you are. 9,400. I wonder if more people are going to flock towards Embiid coming up with 80 DK. Um, I know my, my inclination is to do so as well, especially in a soft matchup versus Spurs. So we might be able to see Jokic come in a little bit under own, um, given everything. So I think that's a really, really top GPP play. And potentially based on builds, you know, you might be able to get there in cash. Um, Outside of Jokic, I do want to be careful on Denver. They really did struggle versus Miami. So, um, you know, with just like a kind of like a shell of a team. I, I, I just don't want to like overload myself in the first game with so many good spots coming in afterwards. But Paul Millsap at 4,900 is something that I think makes a lot of sense, especially, you know, consider the matchup, like the likes of Gallinari on him. Millsap could really take advantage of that. And at 5K, you don't need a lot to get there. I'm Porter Jr., 4,500. It was a lot easier at 3K, right? 4,500 does make you pause and think. The talent is there. We know that there's huge upside when he's hitting. He struggled just from the field in general. And by the time it was time time for him to come back and get another shift in, the game was out of hand. Malone decided to sit in. So, you know, I think it's somebody that I'm interested in going back to, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get there for cash. But, you know, a tournament spot, definitely going to look at him. And then Monte Morris, 5K, fine play. I just think that, you know, they've obviously priced the value out. Um, so you don't necessarily get a deal on him, especially, you know, going up against likes of uh, SGA and CP3. He's a fine play. I'll, I'll say that. He won't be a core play. It won't be like somebody like I'm shoving into my lineups with all the options today. On the OKC side of the ball, <clears throat> really just two guys I'm going to focus on. Obviously, Chris Paul is always a great play, but, you know, I, I like playing him when, his price comes down a little bit. He's just a little steep for me at 7,700. Um, Shea Gilgis Alexander at 6,000 st- stood out to me. Um, I expected him to be about 7,000. He dropped 36.5 last game, um, went for 11.99 and 16.4 and 3 in the previous two meetings with Denver. So there's some history of him, you know, exceeding value at this tag. The other play that really I'm interested in, and I love the history on him, was Steven Adams. So – he had an amazing game versus uh, Utah and Rudy Gobert going for 16-11 on his way to 36.3 DK. He's only 5,400. The last two meetings versus Utah, 19, 17, 18, and 14. So 5,400, you know, that's giving you 7 to 8x upside um, for a really good price. So I think that that is somebody that, you know, before researching, I wasn't going to be on at all. And now that I'm looking, I'm like, 
that, that that's something I really want to be, get a piece of maybe in cash, but definitely in tournaments. Um, next game could have a ton of juice. Um, Indiana versus Washington. We saw Washington really be part of the game stack that, you know, won people tournaments uh, versus Brooklyn yesterday. Um, Indy is a seven and a half point favorite, 227.5 total. Indy are the injury news we really need to watch. So Oladipo is doubtful. I would very much expect him to be out. Brogdon is questionable. Um, if Brogdon and Depot are both out, you could easily be looking at getting three to four Indy pieces for your lineups. So the first piece um, that, you know, I think is going to be chalk across the industry is TJ Warren. Um, he's coming off of 53 real points, 70 DK, 29 shots, went 20 for 29. He's always going to get buckets back to NC State days. Um, and Washington's not going to have any defenders to really throw at him. So, you know, I think at 7,400, I think, you know, you're really in cash potentially looking at 60, 70% player. Um, you know, I'll have him in pretty much most of my lineups, maybe one, two fades. If I normally do just, just so you guys know, I do about like four to five lineups. That's what I'm comfortable with. Anything more, I start getting a, a little bit crazy uh, and struggling like to make swaps as I need to. So four to five lineups is good for me. But, you know, I'm thinking maybe I'll do like one to two fades um, just because at the price, you know, you really need anything like shy of 40 to 45 you can make up. You know, if he goes for 70 and you're dead. But, you know, if I had to do a projection, I'd probably say – 40, 45 DK would be what I expect. Um, but, you know, hey, at least my cash lineup, I'll have him if he goes ham again. But uh, again, 7,400, he's going to get a ton of usage, if, especially if Brogdon isn't there. And even if Brogdon's there, he's still going to get a ton of shots in that first unit. Miles Turner, I really, really do like in this matchup. Um, we just saw Jared Allen dominate Thomas Bryant. Thomas Bryant's not a good defender. Um, Washington itself is not, not, not a good defensive team. And with no Sabonis, I really do think this is the spot that Turner does pop off. At 6,100, I think you're getting a, a steal. Now, again, when I was making, like, before I did all my deep research, it was easy, like, Turner easily over Steven Adams. Now, for the $700 discount, I, I really do kind of, like, ponder this. But maybe, you know, you go to a two-center build, and maybe and with Embiid possibly being really, really um, popular, that would make your lineup immediately contrarian. So, you know, I think that that's one of the GPP routes I'm definitely going to be going. Um, Brogdon himself, 6,200. Let's let's look at news. I'm not going to really go into it, but, you know, understand that if he's not playing and not have limitations, he's definitely um, a solid spot, a solid play at 6,200. Aaron Holiday, 5,000, is going to be very popular as well, 15, 5, and 10. Um, and I think it was 38 minutes. Uh, 5K in this matchup is awesome. Um, again, like, to me and why I'm not going to be like Monte Morris, like do I want to pay 5,000 for Aaron Holiday or 5,000 for Monte Morris? Like that's a no brainer to me. Um, TJ McConnell, uh, the guy I always love playing, um, was awesome in only 18 minutes versus the Sixers. Um, you know, with Debo out, with Bro if Brogdon misses, I think you need this to, to project uh, McConnell up into those low twenties range where he could really hit. Sucks that they raised his price to 4,500, but I think he's still in play. Final guy, Justin Holiday, played 38 minutes, um, took nine shots, only shot two for nine, but still got 19.5 DK. Very, very streaky shooter, but when he's on, um, you know, you could, he's somebody at 3,700 that could seriously give you eight to nine X. So if you're needing a sub 4K value, he's one of the better ones on the slate. Washington side of things, Tom Spring, 6,300, coming up to 59.8 DK. I prefer Miles Turner to him, um, but I think Bryant will probably be double as owned um i'm probably gonna fade i just think that the, the matchup stuff i think turner is a lot better defender than um jared allen and coming off the back-to-back -back, um playing a lot of minutes after you know coming into the bubble with conditioning issues i think it might be a good spot to fade so that would be kind of my bold take um i'm hoping not to look at halftime and look at mentions and see bryant with like 30 dk that would be uh That'd be a tough start. Troy Brown Jr. I do love. Um, I played a decent amount of him yesterday. I'm coming off the bad game. And he rewarded me and a lot of people in the industry with 22, 10, and 8. He's only 5,200. I'm um, coming off 17 shots. They just really don't have any wing players or really creators. So Brown is on the ball a ton. So I really like him here. Ish Smith, 4,700 off the bench. 
um, has 33 and 31.5 in the first two. So at sub 5K, you know, definitely can go back to the well. I was surprised just how chalk he was yesterday. So I would assume he'd be very popular today as well. Going to the third game, and this is the pace game of the day. Excuse me. <clears throat> we have Memphis uh, versus New Orleans. New Orleans is a four and a half point total, or a four and a half point favorite. 237.5 point total is insane. Um, top play potentially on the slate, and my cover boy for this video and uh, preview is John Morant, 7,300. I was shocked they did not get him above 8K for this matchup. He has 47 48 in the first two games uh, in the bubble. He's looked absolutely sensational, taking 20 shots per game. Um, and he thrives in pace. So, like, what more do you want in this this game? I, you know, I guess, you know, if you could say, what more do you want? You want to know that Drew Holiday or uh, Lonzo Ball aren't going to be defending him. Both of them are fine defenders, but just to me, like, matchups in the NBA are kind of like tiebreakers to me. Um, when I'm deciding between two players, not when like a game is just set up to go berserk in terms of pace. I'm not going to like not target a top play because I'm a little worried about, about the defense, you know, the NBA while defense very much matters, look, you know, play after play, not everybody is giving it their all in every single match matchup. So there's, there's no way I'm paying drive more here. Just like was the first guy in my lineups and I, I'm rolling with him. Hope we get another 40 burger. It's just crazy though to me that I can get 6x on him with just 40. So, you know, you're already opening up seven to eight. Like the way they priced him, he's already put up six and a half um, times his value in the first two games. He's just a misprice to me. Jaron Jackson Jr. is 43 and 32 in his last two, um, 6,200. He is going to get, you know, he's fortunate that Zion isn't on full minutes. Uh, it, you know, is on the minutes restriction. Jerry Jackson Jr., like, the reason that we don't like to play him is just because he just loves to foul. So, you know, hopefully he can avoid Zion a ton. But, you know, if, if you could you could get Jerry Jackson Jr. with two fouls in the first four minutes and tilt your face off. Um, 6,200, I think he's completely fadeable. Like, it's not like the lock that he was the last few slates. Um, Valanchunas, I think, is interesting if you want to just be really, really contrarian. He's not going to come owned at all. But it's a matchup that he could dominate. Um, versus the undersized favors. Just it's also one of those things if, if favors or New Orleans is doing well, Joe Val could get run off the court and they could play Brandon Clark at the five. And speaking of Brandon Clark, um, he burned a lot of people yesterday, including myself. I had a decent, decent amount of him. I think he's in like two of my five lineups, but 4,200 is a great price for his upside. On the New Orleans side of the ball, here is the interesting thing. As much as I love this game, I don't love any of the New Orleans prices. I don't think that you need any of them in a cash or optimal build. But if you want to kind of be, you know, you want to stack this game up to be, like, off the chalk, I think, like, because there's going to be so much ownership on Indiana, I think that makes a lot of sense. So Holiday, Ingram, ball over, all over 8,000. Sucks. I really wish, like, they were in that seven to 7,800 range. I feel a little bit better. Um, I think my favorite would be Ingram at 8,100. I just, uh, when they need buckets, he's really going to look to go get them. Holiday 8,700, I think, is okay. Ball at 8,000, I'll probably pass on. Um, and that's probably about it. Their favor 5,300 is fine. But just these New Orleans pieces are tough. And then, you know, obviously look at Zion. Um, I think he's the minute some is still going to be there, which is crazy because, like, I thought the New Orleans would want to be winning these games. But we'll see. We should know the news. Um, at this point, though, I'm going to be building with no Zion in my four to five builds. Um, San Antonio versus Philly kind of hinted. So Philly's minus seven, two twenty eight. I kind of hinted towards uh, Embiid being really popular, and kind of here's why I'm gonna get low drinkable class. So it's coming off the massive eighty one point three point outing uh, versus Indiana on Sunday. I'm sorry, Saturday, forty one and twenty one. San Antonio is throwing Jakob Pertl and nobody else at him, like. They, the, the, their bench depth gets dark really quick. I have no idea who they're gonna, how they're going to defend Embiid. And the answer is, I don't think they're going to defend Embiid. I, I think it's going to be potential mutilation. Like, I was all over Giannis, as was the industry. Like, I'm not going like, to take a victory lap over Giannis last night. But, you know, you watch the game. There's nothing Milwaukee could do. Like, I'm sorry, that Houston could do. You, you have P.J. Tucker and, and Robert Covington. Giannis is like, I'm going to go dunk the ball right now. And he goes and dunks the ball, right? 
So for me, in this spot, it's like, what, what, what is Pop going to do? Hey, Jakob Pertl, like, stop and beat. Like, it's not going to happen. He could barely stop Jonas Valanciunas before he fouled out uh, yesterday. So on the back-to-back, I just think everything's set up for Embiid to have another monster game. Like, anything short of 50, I'd be shocked by. Um, and to me, from a, above the studs, like, he's easily over LeBron and Davis for me. Um, and somebody I'm expecting to be pretty popular in cash and for good reason. Um not going to play Simmons above 9K. Al Horford's like 7,500. Harris is above 8K. Like, it's Embiid or bust for the Sixers. You know, I, I wanted to look at Jay Rich at 4,800, but he took four shots last game in a close game. So, no. If, like, if I'm playing a Sixer, it's going to be Yoel Embiid. Um, I say Yoel? Joel. I don't know what's going on. It's early. San Antonio had a ball. DeMar DeRozan's only taking 11 shots per game. Like, since, he, since he's been to the ball, I don't know, like, that DeRozan taking 25 is, like, long gone. So, A200, I'll pass. I'm much more interested in the Murray-White range. Derek White is somebody I played um, first two days at really low ownership. Wondering if he's going to finally get a little bit of steam here. But he's only 5,700. He's taking 14 shots a game. And the two games in the battle, he's 26, 8, and 5, and 16, 6, and 7. Like, that's the type of player we love that fills up the stat sheet. Um, and still sub-6K, I'm all over it. Um, Murray, 6,100, coming off of his one of his better games of the season. I think you can go back to it, but personally for the discount, I'll just take Derek White. Uh, Lonnie Walker, they finally priced up at 4,400. Uh, I think we can pass. Uh, Keldon Johnson was up too. So I, I think we've already discussed better options than that. We don't need to go there. Final game of the slate, and I, I don't think there'll be much ownership out here at all. Like, I don't think you're going to have a ton of people come in late game hammers. But we have LA at, uh, versus Utah. LA is minus six. Look, LeBron and Davis are fine plays, but I just kind of mentioned I'm not playing them over Embiid. Uh, you know, so if Davis goes off, like that's great leverage off of Embiid it's versus Utah. Um, the way that LA looked versus Toronto, I just don't think you need it. So LeBron, Davis, Kuzma are probably the LA pieces. But I don't think you need any of them. Obviously for showdown you will, right? But for classic, which we're talking about, I don't think you need it. Um, LeBron, two games this season versus Utah, 24 and 12, 32, 7 and 10. Fine games, obviously, but not anything that's going to, like, kill you. You know, you need LeBron to go for, like, 70 to need him in your lineups at 10-7. Davis uh, actually did not do that well. I was surprised. I thought he might cause Gobert some serious trouble. Um, being, you know, how he likes to stretch. But, you know, maybe they're doing a lot more O'Neal on him. But 26-6 and six and 21-7-2 and two in the first two games versus Utah. On the Utah side of things, Gobert, Mitchell, Conley are the three that I'd be interested in. I think Conley is the one that I'm – the only one that I would be apt to play because of the price of 5,500. Mitchell at 7K is fine. I'm just not a Donovan Mitchell DFS guy. Like, I love the guy and how he plays. But he's just very scoring reliant. And at 7K, like, John Morant at 73, right? Like how, how are you going to play Mitchell here over John Morant? Then Rudy Gobert, I've talked about how stacked center is, um, especially like below him with Turner, with, uh, with Adams, with Bryant, with Jokic, with Embiid. I, I don't see a route that you play um, much Gobert. Guys, that will do it. I want to thank everybody once again for supporting these videos. I am off of NBA duty tomorrow. Zach is back from vacation and will be joining you all tomorrow. So make sure you check that out. So once again, Keith, uh, AKA Gator Guy 231. And I hope you guys crush it today. Take care.